Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the day three SSF Righteous Fire character. Uh, we are level 88, so I believe eight levels since yesterday. Uh, and we are actually in somewhat of red maps now. I know that this atlas looks really weird, but we do actually have uh, quite a bit of red maps located right over here. So pretty happy with the character progress. We have dropped a natural five link. And then to just update you guys with where we are, um, I put up the video from yesterday for you guys over here. And you can see that we have started getting some of our unveils. Uh, which is what I used Jun for in the early stages of the uh, League progression. Jun, also known as Betrayal League. So, before I jump into a quick map, uh, this time around I'm just going to actually showcase some of my gear. So, um, this is the same exact Scepter. I have not unlocked the Fire Multicraft yet, so that's why we're still using the Increase. This has my Vitality Arrogance set up with my Purity of Elements. Um, I don't know if I got a new helmet. I, I want to say I did get a new helmet. Basically, the only main thing about this helmet is it has decent armor. Actually, the armor is not very decent. It just has the increased life regeneration rate. Um, that's really about it on that helmet. With my shield charge, life tap, frost blink, faster attacks. Over here is the shield that I showed you guys the other day. All I did is just basically regal and craft life on it. Here I've got my life tap, flammability, malevolence. I did get really lucky and I actually found a fractured dot multi amulet on a dex base from a ritual. Uh, so what I did with this is, as you can tell, the dot multi is fractured and because it's only item level 71, we cannot actually get plus one gems. So what I did instead is I came over to my horticulture and I actually did reforge chaos to essentially guarantee that chaos resistance. Um, then, you know, pretty much just praying that I get something. It's not really a very good amulet, but it's very good for my current progression, right? So I will probably reforge this a little bit more in the future, but for now it's very good. Um, <clears throat> over here on the right, I ended up getting a minimum frenzy ring from Betrayal. So you can see it's got the minimum frenzy with frenzy on kill. Uh, got a nice all res roll, crafted the cold and chaos, and the prefixes are really bad. We're just not going to talk about them. Uh, still, I got my Minimum Frenzy, so I don't actually need Blood Rage anymore if I still have it. That's done. All right. Uh, next ring is basically just uh, a good Amethyst ring um, to help Chaos Cap myself. We actually are basically Chaos Cap. We're 69%. I don't really have to worry too much about Chaos Damage now, so that is pretty nice. Uh, our 5 link, uh, I used pretty much the process of throw all of my currency at it and whatever hits is what we use. Uh, what I mean by that is by like quite literally in the early stages of progression, you know, I'm scour alking, I'm throwing a few chaos, I'm using harvest reforge, literally whatever, just because I, I want to use that five link right away to gain the addition of life tap here, which is just more damage, right? No reason not to. Um, similar gloves to yesterday, except they're just better. So plus two AOE gloves with increased AOE. Uh, with a life roll, with an awesome dex roll, with a fire res roll. The reason that dex roll is awesome is because with the dex here, the dex on my ring and the dex base here, I actually don't have dex nodes allocated. So that's plus two passive points, right? Uh, my belt is essentially just a really thick life belt. It's got the T2 life roll with the T1 life regen. Um, and then I crafted trap throwing speed. I could craft a suffix of res, but my res feels totally fine. Until I'm ready to drop Purity of Elements, I'm just going to keep trap throwing speed on it. It just feels better. And then my boots are uh, just movement speed boots with no life, but good chaos resistance, essentially. Yeah, that's pretty much about it. Uh, over here, I've got the Trap and Mind Combustion, Fire Trap, Life Tap. And then over here, we've got Determ, Life Tap, Infernal Cry. I can definitely get on a... Uh, I have not used Molten Shell yet, so Molten Shell is something we're going to be throwing on. And all my gems hit level 20, which actually brings me to the next part on something a lot of new players seem to not know is the concept of flipping your gems. So I always get this question that is, hey man, I'm leveling up in PoE and I'm playing your Righteous Fire build and uh, I just want you to know that I found a Vol Righteous Fire. Should I use that Vol Righteous Fire? And what I will tell you typically is no, do not use that Vol Righteous Fire because when you uh, get your gems to level 20, what you wanna go ahead and do is flip your gems. And a lot of people don't fully understand what flipping is. So here I will help you guys out and explain. I'm just going to run through Blood Aqueduct really fast to get this gem level because uh, pretty sure the gems are just about to level. Doesn't really matter that much. We could just go back if they don't level on this. 
Please? Please fire traps. I know you're there. Fire traps, please. Okay, they're... Whatever, I'll just level them later. I just wanted to level all the gems in the sink because it's annoying. These right here, they are like 300k away. Doesn't matter. So the concept of flipping your gems looks something like this. You take your gems, you take GCPs for your gems, and you sell a level 20 gem with GCPs, and they come out level 120 quality. This ends up saving you a lot of GCPs in the long run, uh, especially in things like SSF. And then I will typically save the GCPs for my awaken gems for later um now i would also flip a lot of the stuff in my gear so i'm gonna like flip my life tap i would also flip all my support gems but flipping all my support gems and then running a red map is not really very smart so i'm not gonna do that uh, i'm just gonna go run the red map so let me just go ahead and do that and i will do the rest of the gem flipping a little bit later so let me just put that there slap that on here's a beach map let's go in Grab our influence. Let's see here. Purity. And good. Yeah. So with our tree, you can see I'm still on the call to arm setup. I could drop it right away because I don't need unwavering stance. So I could take these two and put them here. And then I would basically connect one, two and drop like one, two, three. But... My damage is not really very good yet, so I do rely heavily on Infernal Cry. There are the fire traps. I'll deal with you later, fire traps. Not yet. As for our six link right now, I am attempting to farm Chains That Bind. Not been super successful, but you know, it is working out just fine. So the strat for that right now is basically uh, the only tier 10 map I have on my Atlas is Cells. So whenever a tier 10 map drops that's not adjacent, basically rolls into Cells. And then I spam run Cells because of good density and because, uh, well, that's really about it. There's not any other reason to run <laughs> to run cells. Um, but uh, has a ch chance to drop chains that bind card, which is a random six link base. And we're going to hope for your armor or armor energy shield. Was that obliteration? It is. Oh, nice. Come back. Oh no, it's Withering Invitation. It's time to fight Shrek. Oh, I don't feel like fighting Shrek, man. Yep, yeah, there we go. There's a red map. Progression has been pretty smooth on the character. <clears throat> As for my Atlas, this is kind of where I'm at. So I'm still doing Expedition. It's majority of my currency right now. So that's why I've got the points in Expedition here and down here. I've still got Jun because I still want to get my Unveils and it's also a super good experience. So keeping Jun. Uh, I've got my map nodes. You can see here I'm also going into Jun. Um, coming up, I started going into Harvest mainly because I'm not really running white maps anymore. And Harvest feels a lot better in yellow and red tier maps. Also, I've been crafting a lot of my gear with, um, not crafting a lot of it, but like, it's it's still part of the crafting process for me, especially like when I get my six link, I will probably use a lot of random harvest crafts just, you know, for the sake of re-rolling your item. Uh, and then later on, when we get our Elder Helm, we're really going to want harvest, so this is going to be very useful. We're going to try skipping essence in the early game and just pivoting into harvest instead. Um, 
<clears throat> with that being said, I still have to grab like bumper crop and doubling season and then later a uh, heart of the grove. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing yet. I may deviate and go into some fun. So basically, I'd be grabbing shrines. Shrines are not bad, though, because uh, um, when I'm running cells, having additional shrines with additional density is extra chance at drops, right? So, you know, that's extra chance at your div cards. There's also a potential strategy to redo my atlas and go wandering path. But I don't know. I've never done a wandering path build. I know it's very good for map sustain. I've just never really done it. Um, and then I think I also want to go into strong boxes because strong boxes are such few points invested to just get like one, two, three for twice tempted, and then just two points for secret operations. And that's really good. That just starts feeding you scarabs. Yep. Other than that, though, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day, but Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. I'll see you guys all on Monday. Thanks for watching, everybody.